the hunt for the next Boston Bruins head coach is on, and there's a few names that are emerging as early candidates. Going to talk about that on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, as well as continue our look back at Don Sweeney's trade history. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your day. The podcast is free and available on all podcast platforms, so please do open up your app, hit that subscribe button. Each new episode will be automatically uploaded to your feeds for you to listen, download, and enjoy. Today is Monday, June 13th, and this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. Quick reminder that if you're on social media, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me, my dad jokes, hockey tweets at ENC McLaren. And I am a lifelong Bruins fan, been covering this team for various outlets for 17 years. And I've seen uh, quite a few coaches come and go. I was thinking last week, actually, that, you know, in light of Bruce Cassidy being fired, it reminded me of the days when Pat Burns was let go, replaced by Mike Keenan. Mike Sullivan let go as an early young head coach in the NHL, replaced by Dave Lewis. I can only imagine the reaction on Twitter following those pretty baffling decisions. Although, obviously, Mike Keenan had a track record, but Burns was pretty beloved as a Bruins head coach and had won a Jack Adams trophy, as did Bruce Cassidy, who, as I mentioned on Friday, is in discussions with several teams about becoming head coach for yeah either the vegas golden knights are interested the detroit red wings dallas stars and we wish them the best but we're focusing now on who will be the next head coach of the boston bruins i was listening to the 32 thoughts podcast uh, this morning elliot friedman hockey insider discussing with jeff merrick and he mentioned three names that are on the Bruins' radar at the moment. The first is a familiar name, and that would be uh, Jay Leach. Uh, Leach was head coach of the Providence Bruins for several years before uh, joining the Seattle Kraken as an assistant coach for their inaugural season. Jay Leach, uh, yeah, was a very successful coach with Providence. He was highly regarded with Providence and probably was next in line to replace Cassidy before joining Seattle. So the trick here would be convincing him to move back across the country uh, for the chance to become a head coach at the NHL level. Will he want to do that? Is he comfortable in Seattle? Is he biding his time there before maybe getting a shot? Uh, If they let Hackstall go, interesting uh, decision to be made for him, whether or not he wants to rejoin the Bruins organization. The next candidate is 
Nate Lehman. He's currently the head coach for Providence, and Friedman mentioned that he was just given a new and pretty sweet deal uh, by Providence. Um, he led Providence to a national championship 2014, 2015. He was named the USCHO Coach of the Year uh, shortly thereafter. And um, last year, as head coach for Team USA's national junior team, he guided the team to a gold medal with a 2 nothing shutout win over Canada. His contract extension expired in 2021, and again, Friedman said that he believes he signed a pretty nice deal with Providence to remain there. So the Bruins would have to make it worth his while to make the move. And especially so with the reality that the Bruins are likely on the downswing at the moment. It would give him a chance to uh, dip his toes in the NHL water, help develop some young players while trying to still win, uh, but also knowing that it could be a, a rough start to the season, seeing as so many players are on uh, the injured list to begin the season. The other candidate is Jim Montgomery. Uh, Jim Montgomery was named head coach of the Dallas Stars back in 2018. Uh, he led the Stars to their first playoff appearance in three years that season. However, in 2019, uh, the Stars let Montgomery go for unprofessional conduct, inconsistent with the core values and beliefs of the Dallas Stars and the NHL. Uh, at that press conference, General Manager Jim Nill said a situation had come to light that involved a material act of unprofessionalism that demanded uh, immediate firing. Didn't offer specifics. Uh, Rick Bonus joined the team and uh, Dallas Stars advanced to the Stanley Cup Final in the playoff bubble in 20. 20. According to Friedman back then, Montgomery was fired for a personal behavior issue. Um, later came out that he had checked himself into a rehab to deal with an alcohol abuse issue. Uh, he said the Stars made an appropriate call in firing him and that the firing made him realize he was living a damaging lifestyle. Uh, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram reported Montgomery was fired in part due to concerns about his drinking. Um, he had been confronted on numerous occasions about drinking in public. And uh, he does have a history with alcohol. He had been arrested for a DUI back in 2008. Um, now, in 2020, St. Louis Blues hired Montgomery to serve as an assistant coach. Um, I believe that contract has run its course. Now he's free to pursue other opportunities. And um, the Bruins seem to have their eye on him. In um, 113 games with the Stars, he posted a record of 60, 43, and 10, a 538 win percentage. Uh, he does have... A pretty good track record as a college coach as well. Won a national championship with Denver. Uh, but of course, the personal issues um, must be proven to have been resolved. Um, and whatever it was, you know, extraneous from the alcohol abuse uh, needs to be in the past as well. So those are the three candidates on the board right now for the Boston Ruins. Jay Leach, uh, Nate Lehman, and Jim Montgomery. No mention of uh, 
of David Quinn, formerly of the Rangers. No mention of Mark Savard, although the OHL playoffs are still ongoing with the Windsor Spitfires down in their series to Hamilton by a uh, 3-2 margin. Which is pretty impressive considering Hamilton had not lost a game in three rounds previous. So that's the latest on the Bruins coaching search. Going to talk here in a moment about Don Sweeney's trade history. Uh, But first, a quick word about Athletic Greens. With what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, energy, recovery, and focus. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a bunch of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover that cost him about $100 a day He created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. That's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you once again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. Got a favor to ask now. We're doing a survey to help make our podcasts even better. It's your opportunity to tell us what you like and what can be improved about Locked On Podcasts. Visit LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey right now to get started. You can qualify for one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. That's LockedOnPodcasts.com slash survey. Thank you so much for your help. Before all the Bruce Cassidy craziness broke last week, I had begun a series looking back at the trade history uh, for Don Sweeney. Um, We got through uh, the 2015 draft. We got through the 2016 and 2017 trade deadlines. And that brings us to the... 2018 trade deadline and this is where Don Sweeney really started to make some big swings uh, via trade. It began on February 27th when he sent uh, Rob O'Gara and a 2018 third round pick to the New York Rangers for depth defenseman Nick Holden. Next, he traded um, a promising young forward in Frank Vetrano to the Florida Panthers in exchange for a third-round pick. So recouping the pick that they had sent to the Rangers. That pick became Jacob Jacob Lauco, who has uh, developed pretty well in the AHL, not quite ready to make the jump to the NHL, I'm not sure if he ever will. Frank Vetrano uh, went from Florida to the New York Rangers, and he was a pretty integral piece for the Rangers during their run to the Eastern Conference Finals with eight, five goals, eight assists, and 13 playoff games for the Rangers this season. And he is likely due for a pretty nice uh, payday this offseason as an unrestricted free agent. All of that set the table for Don Sweeney's biggest move at the 2018 trade deadline, 
which was acquiring veteran forward Rick Nash at 50% retained in exchange for uh, Matt Belisky, 50% retained there. Uh, Ryan Spooner, uh, who was a uh, forward. Uh, Ryan Lindgren, defenseman. A first-round pick and a seventh-round pick in 2019. Rick Nash, of course, was an incredible power forward for the Columbus Blue Jackets, the New York Rangers. Unfortunately, he did not pop as a member of the Boston Bruins as concussion issues reared uh, their ugly head and kept him from uh, really making a huge impact for the Boston Bruins. But the deal in and of itself showed that Don Sweeney was willing to bring in high-end talent in order to boost the roster for a uh, for a playoff run. The Bruins uh, did not succeed that season in, you know, making a deep run. Uh, 2018, of course, they beat the Columbus... Oh, sorry. They beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in round one, seven games, but they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in five games in the second round. Rick Nash appeared in all 12 playoff games, and he... Scored, I believe, three goals and added two assists. But was not 100% after suffering a concussion during the regular season. Uh, dumping Matt Bellisky's contract was a win. Ryan Spooner didn't pan out. He was flipped to the Edmonton Oilers for Ryan Strom, which is a win for the Rangers for sure. Um, and... Kind of a uh, knock on Peter Chiarelli, who was with the Edmonton Oilers, who made that move. Ryan Lindgren, he's the guy that kind of got me thinking about this um, this series, looking back at his trade history, because, you know, watching him play for the Rangers this season, it became clear that he would have fit in pretty well as a member of the Boston Bruins. Physical... Um, kind of the guy that they covet, like a, a better version of uh, Derek Forbort, for sure. The first round pick uh, became Jacob Bernard Docker. That selection was made by the uh, Ottawa Senators, who acquired the pick. Um, he is a pretty talented right-hand shot defenseman. Uh, he's appeared in 13 games for the Senators, only one point so far, but uh, he should be a regular for them at some point after a pretty successful college season. That pick was only 26th overall, uh, so it was a late first-round pick that the Bruins ended up giving to the Rangers. On the whole... It didn't work out for the Bruins. Um, they could have used that first round pick for sure. Lindgren, they could have used still. Uh, dumping Belisky Spooner was a win for the Bruins. Getting Nash was a win. I loved seeing him in black and gold. He was one of my favorite players for the Bruins. Oh, sorry, just uh, my favorite non-Bruins back in the day. And I loved seeing him in black and gold. The Bruins made one other deal uh, prior to the deadline, acquiring Tommy Wingles from the Chicago Blackhawks for a fourth-round pick that became Antti Sorella. He did not crack the NHL. Uh, so it was a bit of a... Um, yeah, just picking up a veteran forward in Wingles for a mid-round pick. So, overall, it was cool to see Sweeney make that swing, acquire Rick Nash. Didn't work out for him personally, as 
you know, he was forced to retire after that season due to those concussion issues. Uh, it would have been great to see him fully healthy for the Bruins. I liked the deal at the time. I was excited about it. Um, Lindgren has turned into a pretty good depth defenseman. Bernard Docker could be something. But at the end of the day, the Bruins were trying to win, and they brought in one of the better available players at the deadline. And that is a credit uh, to Sweeney. Didn't work out in hindsight, but at the time, it made a lot of sense. Later on this week, we'll continue our look back, look at the 2019 trade deadline, and uh, so forth. Um, I hope you're enjoying this series. And uh, before we move to some news and notes from around the NHL, a quick word about Bet Online, your number one source for all betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest developments, news, and odds on the ongoing NBA Finals, the upcoming Stanley Cup Finals, uh, Major League Baseball, NFL Futures, some fights, and so on. Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, like I mentioned, the Stanley Cup final is set. The Tampa Bay Lightning defeating the New York Rangers. They will take on the Colorado Avalanche in what should be one of the better Stanley Cup finals in the past few years. There was a baffling decision made by head coach Gerard Gallant, scratching Capo Caco for game six. Uh, he's a restrictor free agent. And should he entertain offer sheets, the Rangers likely won't be able to match. Maybe a sim similar situation to Jesperi Kotkaniemi in Montreal. He was not uh, played very much during their run to the Stanley Cup final. Signed the offer sheet with the um, Carolina Hurricanes. And... The Hurricanes, sorry, the Canadians did not match. Now, is he upset enough over being scratched in Game 6 to entertain offer sheets? Maybe. Uh, will other teams step up and sign him to one? Possibly. He's a very talented young player. The kid line of Lafreniere, Hedl, and Kako was very good um, at times during the playoffs. And... Um, I could see someone coming in with an offer sheet. Ryan Strom, I mentioned earlier, was acquired by the Rangers for Ryan Spooner. He was clearly injured during the playoffs. He's an unrestricted free agent. Um, he has played well for the Rangers. Could be a guy that is on Boston's radar as a free agent, as could be Andrew Kopp, a guy the Bruins were interested in at the trade deadline, but ultimately didn't pull the trigger on. Uh, I mentioned Frank Vetrano. So there could be some players on the Rangers that pique the Bruins' interest. And um, again, they're going to need to clear some cap space in order to be able to make some moves in free agency. One player who could be available is Evgeny Malkin. Apparently, the Penguins' priority is re-signing Chris Letang. Discussions between Letang and Malkin are ongoing, but uh, their priority is Letang. Now, he could command up to you know seven million dollars right now. Too expensive for the Bruins, but if they're able to clear some cap space, he could be someone who enters into the sec the center position and fills in as they transition to some younger players, although he has been um, pretty injured over the last few years. Not a guy that you can rely on for 82 games. 
I think that's pretty much it in terms of... Oh, actually, another note on the Rangers. They signed Vitaly Kravtsov, who played in the KHL this past season. Another signal that they could be... Um, yeah, moving on from some guys and bringing him in. On the coaching front, Alf Samuelson was let go by the Panthers as an assistant coach. Can't see him coming to Boston because of his relationship with uh, Cam Neely, but he could be a guy who generates some interest as a head coach. I think that's it for today's episode, friends. I hope you had a great weekend. Mine was pretty fun. We went and saw Jurassic World Dominion with the boys on Friday. Not a high-quality movie, but it was fun to see all the characters come together and uh, just to see some dino action through my kid's eyes. He's very into dinosaurs these days. Softball tournament on Saturday. Not super successful, but pretty fun. Still a little sore from that. Uh, I watched Hustle, the Adam Sandler movie, while I was resting after the tournament, and uh, highly recommend that movie. One of my favorites of Adam Sandler's recently, for sure. And one of those, you know, inspiring, fun sports movies that we don't really see that much anymore. Speaking of basketball, good luck to the Celtics tonight. Check out the Locked On Celtics podcast for the latest on them. And check out the Locked On NHL podcast for the latest from around the league with the Stanley Cup final set to begin this week. Happy Monday, everybody. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.